Hi guys, welcome back to Detailing in the Beast. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. This is an OBD2 fault code reader from Streetwise. This is available on Amazon for less than 20 quid. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in it after this review. Um, I am a little skeptical already. Um, I've seen a fair few reviews of generic OBD2 fault code readers. I've had a few of the ones where you connect in via a little Bluetooth adapter um, and then some software on your mobile phone and they've never been that good to be honest. So I only bought this because it was on offer um, and we've got a problem on the little Datcher outside so that's got a, a fault code on it at the minute. Um, it's got an EML light, an engine management light but it does not have any way of, of having a look at them codes without a specific reader. So I've bought this reader, it's a streetwise one, the reviews on Amazon were relatively good. Um, so I bought it and we'll see how this goes. So we've gone for the Streetwise OBD2 full code reader. Um, as I say, a time of video in this was £17.50 on Amazon, so really, really cheap. Um, it feels cheap as well, to be honest, for as long as it does the trick we're gonna be happy. So what do you get? So inside here, you get the OBD2 scan tool and you get the OBD2 connector, obviously connected together on a lead. You only get two buttons, enter and scroll. So you're gonna scroll through a menu on here and press enter to choose something I would assume. With this, there is no batteries required. You do not open it up. You do not have to have any batteries. It draws power from the OBD2 connector itself on the car. So this, if it works, is gonna be absolutely brilliant for keeping in the glove box. So if you're out and about, you get a code come up straight away. You don't know whether you're able to carry on driving or not. This is going in the glove box. You plug it in, jobs are good and right. You're gonna get the code. You're gonna find out what's wrong with your car before you even have to take it in for diagnostics at the garage. And for 17 pound 50, that is gonna save you money every day of the week. So what can this do? It can read codes, it can reset codes, all on cars that are OBD2 compliant. Now that is important, your car has to be OBD2 compliant. Now that is most cars after 1996, I believe. We've already mentioned that it doesn't need batteries to operate. It also doesn't need any further software, it doesn't need updating, it doesn't need a computer. So there are many tools out there, there are hundreds if not thousands of pounds and they will need computers and everything to run to get your, your car plugged into. Now don't get me wrong, them things are going to be a hell of a lot better than this. This is not going to be replacing dealer diagnostic equipment, it isn't right. This is just something quick that you can get the tool, you can get an idea of what might be wrong with the car. And we'll go into that later because we're going to see what that EML light on the Datcher is all about. So what can you do? So you can read codes, obviously. You can reset codes, so if you think that this is like a, an erroneous code, a one-off, you can reset it, see if it comes back. Not the ideal situation by all means, but if you know if that's what you want to do, then it, it is a genuine method of fault discovery. Reset it, see if it comes back. You can turn off the engine management light. So if you've got a problem with the car that you just need to get that EML off for whatever reason, this can turn the EML off. Now, obviously, it's going to come back on in time, but you can turn it off again with this. So you can keep resetting it with this if you wish. Now, one example I know of that that happens, um, I used to have a Focus ST. It used to run a DCAT. And before I got that DCAT mapped out in terms of the engine management light, I had to carry one of these with my laptop at the time. This was probably about five years ago. And I used to have to keep resetting that EML light on my focus. So that is one reason why you'd do it. Now this will read generic and manufacturer specific codes as well, it says. Um, we're gonna find out which one that is outside. I'm gonna guess it's a generic one. Um, what else can you do? So apparently you can retrieve your VIN number on 2002 year model cars and later. So what else do you get? So in the in the packaging, you obviously get the tool, um, and you also get this user manual. Now, nobody reads a user manual. These things are mega simple. But in this case, we have, in section 5, on, on page 12, we have the DTCs, which is the Diagnostic Trouble Codes definitions. So when you get a code, and there are hundreds upon hundreds in here, so this is like a code dictionary. This is absolutely brilliant. Now, all these codes, these are generic ones, these are all available online if you search them. So if you Google, I don't know, P0024, which is a camshaft position sensor, that will come up on Google because it's a generic code. 
But if you've got this in the glove box, you won't even need to do that. You can just loop this up. They're in numerical and alphabetical order. You will loop this up and you'll find out on pretty much most occasions, you will find out what is potentially wrong with your car. So we're going to go out. We're going to plug this in now into the datchet. We'll come back and we'll see what we found. So we're now inside the car. Um, I'm just going to turn this on and show you that we do have an active engine management light. There it is. I'm just going to knock these blowers off. Um, so yeah, we have an active engine management light. No other indication of what that might be. Um, so let's see what this reader does for us. So in this car, I know that the plug for the Humble Diagnostics is all the way at the back in there. So I'm just going to plug that in. And instantly that lights up. So do we enter or scroll? So if I do scroll, no. Enter. There we go. It's scanning, scanning all the modules. DTC is three. Mm, interesting. Okay, so we can scroll through this menu just to show you. So we can uh, show the codes, erase the codes. Uh, not sure what that is. The VIN number of the vehicle, rescan. Okay, so this vehicle will be going in. It's been booked in uh, to the Datcha Service Centre. Um, because it's still under warranty, but I just want to see what the actual problem might be before it goes. So if we do DTC, has fault two, pending one. Okay, great. Uh, and then it gives us these codes. So these are what we're going to need. So uh, you're best to either take a photo of these so you can come back to them later, um, or or just note them down with a pen and paper. Note that this unit does not have any sort of memory, it does not have any sort of battery, it literally takes its power from the cable. Um, so as soon as you plug it in, it powers up, as soon as you take it out, it's gone again. Um, so this is not gonna store anything for you. Um, so you are gonna need to note these down. So I've got a P0138, a P0141, and that must be the pending one. Okay, so we've got two live, one pending. Um, so we're going to go and we're going to have a quick look on the internet now. These are generic OBD2 codes. So we're going to go and Google these and then we'll find out what the problem is. I would suspect that these two will be related. Okay, so firstly, I do have to apologise. It's been a couple of weeks and I'll tell you why. Um, so the codes we had out of the car when I last saw you, the last piece of video were a P0138 and a P0141. And according to the book that I told you to keep in the glove box, if I remember rightly, um, P0138 is an O2 sensor circuit, high voltage bank one sensor two. P0141 is O2 sensor heater circuit malfunction, bank one sensor two. So it's the same sensor. Now, I did tell you last time, I suspected that they would be related. Um, and I've had a quick look on the internet and them codes came out as the O2 sensor in the catalytic converter, there's a lack of oxygen in the exhaust. So that could be too much fuel or not enough air. Same thing, right? The air to fuel mix is off, so the cat reports it. Um, so it could be the, the mixture's off or more likely it could just be the sensor. Um, now, having a look around on the internet, I was advised that more than likely it would be the sensor. Um, with it being exposed underneath the car um, and the way it is on the Datcha, uh, it's it's susceptible to, to breaking that cable, so the cables just hang free. Um, so I had a look at that. There was no issue with the cable at all. There was no breaks in the cable. It, it looked fine. Uh, I was then advised to take out the plug from the sensor itself, so remove the plug, from the wiring harness from the sensor, um, because sometimes water gets in there and creates a short. So I took that sensor plug off, sprayed it with WD, put it back on, cleared the fault code with the reader, went for a little drive 
it all seemed fine. So I thought I'd solved the problem. And within a day or two, um, the missus reported that the engine management lights had come back on. Now, the car at that time was under warranty. Um, that's another story. So we got it booked in with Dacia. Uh, and Dacia came back and said, yeah, it's a knackered sensor. Car's under warranty. And we had a new sensor replaced. That's the basics of the story. Um, there was a little bit more to it than that. Um, so, yeah, you know what? Overall, that is probably... A decent enough review. Um, I had a genuine fault code come up on the car, one that I cleared using the reader, expecting it to, to go away. It didn't, it came back. It gave me two codes. I checked them codes out. I had a, a relatively good idea after looking in the book and jumping on the internet of what that problem is likely to be and definitely what it was related to. Um, and it allowed me to, to give the service centre some knowledge or prior what this problem might be when they get the car. Um, instead of just ringing up and going, yeah, the engine management lights, come on, can I drop it off next week? I need it back in a day. Yeah, they're not going to know. They're not going to give you any sort of answer. If you ring up and say, look, I've got two engine management codes. They are this and this. They are related to this and this. Um, then, you know, happy days, you might get some sort of better service because they're, they're believing that you know what you're on about. Um, but anyway, overall, this cracking bit of kit, less than 20 quid, it's great for in the glove box, as I said, it'll work with any OBD2 compliant car, so not just your own car, it's one for the entire, for the entire family, friends, you know, it's something good to have, it's one of them tools that people will always say, have you got one of them? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, I got one of them, I'll, I'll bring it in tomorrow, you know, one of them. Um, but anyway. So that brings us to the end of this week's video. Now this one has been a little bit of a marathon to get finished with all the waiting and toing and froing and taking the car to the dealers and having the fix done and all of that. But it's there now. Hopefully somebody will get some good use out of this. Um, if you like this video, pop a thumbs up. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're made aware of my next upload. And as always, guys, Thank you for watching. Your view time really does mean the world to me. Uh, I can see the channel growing week on week. Though it means it means everything. It really does. Um, so again, just a quick thank you for that. And I will see you on next week's video. Goodbye.